Decisions, decisions, decisions. We all make them throughout our daily routines, right? Our human brains have developed a nifty ability which allows us to use advanced forethought and make extremely complex decisions. It's what separates us humans from, well, I guess any other animal. So in this video, we're gonna be covering advanced decision-making tactics that most people don't even consider important. Although the epitome of a professional player is smart decisions. Would you agree with that? If you don't agree, you're probably not winning games. Just being real. All right, so decision making applies to everything you or I do, right? And with Fortnite, there is really no difference. And when you load up a game and hop on the battle bus, do you find yourself actively thinking about strategy? Do you develop strategies about, you know, what your next five moves are gonna be in each and every game? If not, we have a little bit of work to do. But please, do not feel discouraged, okay? Because most people really don't even think about this. They don't think about the why behind their game related decisions. So have no worries, guys, as we are gonna change that right about now. What's going on guys, this is your guy, that's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Hey, I just want to let you know I'm your biggest fan, and the sky is not the limit. I want to see you succeed, not only in Fortnite, but also in life, okay? So I want you to connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram, I would love to hear from you. Alright ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be taking another deep dive into decision making. If this sounds familiar to you, I want to let you know this. You are absolutely awesome because that means you've been keeping up with our channel. I wish I could give you a prize right now. For those of you that have been living under a rock or maybe you're dirty close, no shade on you, all right? But we did post a video last week that similarly covered decision making. You guys smashed that like button so much in that video and you left a ton of positive comments. So we just knew we had to do a part two. I mean, like that was completely necessary. If you guys enjoy this type of content and you potentially want to see a part three, why don't you just go ahead and do it again? All right, just slap a like button on this video as soon as you can and leave a comment telling us why you want more. It really does mean a lot, guys. It really, really does more than you could just ever imagine. I just got one more thing before we get into the video. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. If you're looking to take your gameplay to the next level, I recommend that you check out Instapro, where we have live 24-7 coaching from some of the best players in the game. Head on over right now to ProGuys.com. Trust me, you will not regret it. With that said, let's get into the good stuff. Okay, so to really pick up where we left off in the first episode, we were talking about early and late game rotations. That's great and all, but after you've watched that part and you made your rotation into zone, you're probably thinking, then what? We need to address one of the most important pieces of your mental checklist. Once you get into the safe zone, your first thought needs to be, where do I go next? Sometimes you won't even have a choice in the matter. You just had a long trek from Junk Junction all the way down to Salty Springs. And the moment you get into the safe zone, a new safe zone appears all the way, guess where? Across the map. If that's the case, then I'll refer you back to our previous video and you can just work on making the rotation into the next zone. But a majority of the time, you will have a choice. Let me phrase it like this. If you find yourself in the next safe zone already and you have a little bit of downtime, what do you think about? I hope you're not thinking about the girl that you should have talked to, but you did it. That's not the time, all right? That's a whole other subject. Right now, you should be focused on what you're gonna do next, all right? If you aren't actively positioning yourself to be the most prepared for the future zones, then my friend, you are quite simply doing it all wrong. Let's take a quick glance at Clicks, who makes rotating look like a breeze. As you can see, the moment he figures out he isn't in the next zone, he realizes it's go time. The rotation is quite free and his decision to move early will most likely be much easier than the latter option. Now, once Clicks gets near the safe zone, his options open up again. And well, since he is Clicks, the option to aggressively push a player sitting edge zone is on the menu. If he had rotated out later, then too many eyes would have been on him and whoever he was fighting would have just made that engagement nearly impossible. Not to mention the poor positioning once the zone actually does close off completely. Once you realize, hey, even if I'm in the safe right now, there's still a good chance that I won't be safe later, and then try to actively work ahead of the zone, you will never be forced into uncomfortable positions. Say you try making your rotations early and are met with some resistance, which happens all the time. Well, you can just base it up and wait for a minute before continuing. If the zone was on your back and you didn't make your way to safety sooner, then my friend, you are simply out of luck because now the entire lobby is targeting you. Yes, you are now famous and you have no place to go. The storm is on you, so you gotta think early and you gotta rotate quick, guys. So now that we talked a bit about positioning and really thinking ahead, we can incorporate the fighting aspect as well. People are always asking me on my Insta, hey, Keith Allen, so what about when someone tries pushing me randomly? Do I run? Do I fight? Do I just start dancing and just try to distract them? Okay, maybe the last question I made up, but whatever. 
Hey, it depends. It really, really does, guys. That's the answer. It really does just depend. You really have to get a feel for the situation, and this is what I'm going to explain right now. Just to be honest with you, first and foremost, I just got to agree with you guys. Getting randomly pushed by some kid who thinks he's like the next rising Fortnite superstar is just mildly irritating. Sometimes you simply just won't have any opportunities to flee. So you fight or flight instincts have to just kick in. If someone wants to fight you so badly, and you know these people, they're just going to chase you until you make your way to the next zone. If that's the case, let's talk about our options. The main counter you can attempt to prevent unhealthy levels of aggression from your opponents is putting them in their place. That's right, you gotta tell them who's boss. Give them a mean pump shot to the face, that'll be a nice gesture. Or you can even trade some AR shots back and forth with them. Got a sniper? You need to let them know. Just say, say hello to my little friend. Okay, if you don't understand that at all, you need to watch Scarface as soon as possible. All right, it's a classic, but you gotta watch it. If you're under 13, please ask your parents. Thank you. Anyways, if you allow yourself to get shot at and you don't do anything about it, you know what you're saying to them? You're basically saying, you know what? I'm weak, period. This should be your go-to choice in all situations because this is the most effective thing that you can do to your opponent to just put the brakes on their chase. Also, if you get some mad damage off on him or her, then you now become the aggressor. You will be in control. You are now in the driver's seat. Now, now, I don't mean just taking this opportunity to catch yourself in an unwanted storm fight or anything like that, but if it's safe enough, you might just be able to snag a kill out of it. If not, then just take your much-earned safe trip to zone. We know that the pesky aggressor won't be bugging you from here on out. We are thinking about making an entire video about this aggressive counterplay, since there is so much content that we can just go over. If you think this is something that you would be interested in, let us know in the comments down below. Anyway, some other techniques that you can use will work depending on the circumstances. One that pops in my mind right now is outmaneuvers, where you use natural terrain, pre-generated structures, or even an entirely different opponent's build and or turtles to cause some chaos. It will be this chaos that's going to put the brakes on your opponent's relentless push, guys, and give you the green light to get out of there. Your last ditch option should be using mobility items such as impulses or launch pads. This is where you're saying to yourself, if I don't use these, I'm basically dead. Think about it like this. Would you rather be alive with less mobility items than you previously had or all the mobility items in the world on your corpse? Hmm. I'm, I'm going to let you think about that for a second. All right. You can decide that for yourself. And while you think about that difficult question, we can move on to the next point. Our next point is something that I like to think is quite valuable when it comes to micro decisions. After all, when you make a bunch of small decisions that end up affecting the result of your entire game, that's what it's all about. So fixing up some of the cracks has always been official, from the biggest bots to the best pros. To be more specific, I'm talking about taking inventory. So you might be asking yourself, okay, what, is, what do I mean by taking inventory? Well, to put it simple, just take a second to realize what you're working with. Tunneling in-game? Okay, keep checking on your mats. Running low? All right, well, make sure that your teammates hand some off to you. Playing solos? Okay, well, try to conserve and go for an impact frag to replenish yourself. This applies to much more than just materials. Keep tabs on your ammo count, mobility items, and even what weapons you're working with. Sometimes I go into a fight thinking I have a pump, right? And then I take my shot in someone's box and I realize it's only a great tag. And you know what? It's too late. Things like that, you know? After playing Fortnite for an extended period of time, especially during tournament play where players just like you have to go on up to 11 hour binges at a time, these basic motor skills unintentionally, they just get depleted. You're going to have to remind yourself of these things constantly until it's second nature. This is even more important for team-based games where your teammates longevity are worth just as much, if not even more than yours. Given that the trio's competitively playlist is being favored by Epic Games right now, keeping your team alive in endgame is arguably one of the most important things. So, there's an extra layer to this tip. Building good communication skills. I say this on my Insta all the time when you ask me questions about trios, all right? This is even more crucial right now, because before, in solo tournament play, you'd be able to quickly just think over this mental checklist of yours, right? Match check, weapons check, heals check, yada yada. You got more checks than your grandma's checkbook. We get it. But now, thinking that's not even enough, you need to translate this thought into active questions. Do you have mats? Okay, well, I only have 300 wood and 400 metal. What's your heals looking like, bro? Since I only have 10 bandages. Things like that. Establishing good lines of communication with your teammate is so important now, more than ever. I can't even begin to tell you just how important it is and what you'll gain from developing this skill set. So to go full circle a little bit here, I really want to hammer home why taking inventory is so important. I see many people playing Fortnite competitively, right? And their mind is like a cog spinning at 100 miles per hour. The light bulb doesn't even get a break at all. 
I don't want to say that they're panicking when playing, but it sort of seems like it. So I just want you guys to calm down a little bit and use the most effective means necessary to consume all of the information at your disposal and communicate if you're playing a team playlist. This is one of those tips that you will never fully master as even the best Fortnite player in the world will tell you that this is a point that they're always looking to improve. So it's definitely an uphill battle, I will say, but it is one that you must start sooner than later. And it has a detrimental impact on your game. I believe in you guys. I believe you guys can do it for real. Hey guys, this was it. Decision making part two. You guys asked for it in droves and we delivered. So I want you to like what you saw. And uh, if you want even more, let us know. You know we're going to deliver. Once again, this is your guy, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Hey, connect with me right now on my Instagram. I am your number one fan. I want to see you guys just do so well, not only in Fortnite, but also in life, okay? Uh, we'll make this series if you guys want it. So let us know as soon as you can. Like the video, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you guys next time.